How you doing again? This is Jason Ennis from Grant Parents 4-H Shooting Sports. And in my last video, we talked a little bit about and quickly about a good recommended rifle for someone just starting in 4-H shooting sports or what a good recommending recommended starter rifle may be. Uh, the rifle initially we talked about was the Ruger series, the 1022 or the Ruger American 1022. And so we'll touch on that one along with the other recommendations we'll go over in some future videos. We'll focus on this one a little bit just to give you an idea what some either modifications or checks you can do to this Ruger to make it a more efficient rifle. Uh, right out of the box, they're not bad. You got to remember that Ruger mass produces these rifles. They want to get them assembled, get them in the box, get them out to the store, get them sold. So along with that, what you have with the receiving screw as well as the V-block screws behind the stock is torque checks so these two screws right here as well as the receiver screw when you get the rifle if you don't have one or one of your coaches doesn't have one a good thing to have is the Wheeler Fat Ranch you can check the torques on these that'll give you an idea to make sure that everything's torqued correctly those v-block screws underneath there are only 10 to 12 inch pounds you don't need any more than that uh, some of the aftermarket V-blocks, they're kind of sold as snake oil. They don't really have any other effect, especially on barrel droop or anything like that that will improve the rifle, especially with a factory barrel. So if you check those or have somebody check those, 10, 10 to 12 inch pounds is all you need. This receiver screw right here, most of them that we found are not tight, barely tight, finger tight, or way over torqued. All you need is a good 20 inch pounds and your receiver is good. Those are two checks that you can do along with the rifle actually functioning, make sure nothing's hanging up, nothing's in a bind, trigger functions, everything else functions before you leave the store is a good thing with the bolt, magazine release, all that. So once you know all that functions, that's kind of an aftermarket check with the receiver screw and those V-block bolts. That can be make a difference. We've seen some of those V-block bolts where one's tight, one's not, both of them aren't tight. Both of them are extremely tight. 20, 30 inch pounds on that V block. You don't need that much. Factory is 10 to 12 inch pounds. So along with that, the checks will go into some slight modifications, some inexpensive modifications to benefit the shooter with this rifle. Uh, one thing is to remove this barrel band. You can see I've already removed this one and modified the stock slightly. So this barrel band usually either pinches on the barrel or pulls it down or somehow is tight on the barrel. Some people that want to keep this barrel band and use it for a sling, actually sand down the inside of that barrel band so it doesn't contact the barrel or have any kind of movement where it doesn't clamp down on the barrel or doesn't touch it. That's fine too as long as we've noticed that if it doesn't touch the barrel, it helps the accuracy. Along with the torques, everything works in conjunction together. So the next thing, is the Ruger sights. Factory sights, they have a little gold dot here in the front. They have a V sight in the rear with a diamond. Not bad sights for your average outdoor rifle. Up against the CMP targets that are khaki with a black bullseye center, sometimes that gold washes out and it's kind of hard to distinguish. It'll get a little blurry and it'll wash out with the black back of the target. So one good, quick, uh, inexpensive modification for these Rugers is the fiber optic sights for at least the front and or front and rear. This is a Williams fire sight version. Uh, and on the Williams, they have two different versions of the rear. One version only has elevation and you have to use a brass punch to move it left to right for your windage. This version has the windage that you can adjust right here at the fiber optics and the elevation back here. So if you're going to change out the rear sight, make sure that is the part that you have the windage and elevation adjustment right here on your rear sight. Front sight is pretty much self-explanatory. A good brass punch, you can change out these front and rear sights. That'll help the shooter distinguish between their sights and the target and won't wash out as much. Most shooters like these are around 25 to 35 dollars depending on what site you go to eBay is a good one some of the other 
rifle sights have them plentiful. I'll type in Ruger 1022 fiber optic sights, and you'll get a bunch of them pop up in Google. With those are slightly easier modifications, something you can do right there on your workbench. When you get a little more into detail inside the internals of the rifle, there's a couple modifications that you can do to the bolt release. The factory bolt release has that little oblong heart groove right there. And when you pull the bolt back and lock it, then you have to pull the bolt back again. With the factory, you have to pull it back, rock that forward, then let the bolt loose. So with this modification, if you take a factory one and just take out that little oblong heart, make it a half circle, that allows the automatic bolt release so you can utilize it with one finger and send the bolt home. That's a lot easier for a first time and a young shooter to use one hand, one finger to send the bolt home instead of trying to use two hands or fiddle with one hand and multiple movements. Um, with a little more in-depth detail, not an exp expensive modification, is the Ruger trigger is usually anywhere from five and a half to six and a half pounds from the factory. Not a bad trigger to start with and learn with. Uh, a lot of shooters have learned with this trigger and it teaches them very, uh, to focus on the fundamentals right off the bat. Because with a hard trigger pull, they have to focus and make sure their fundamentals are slightly up to par than with a hair trigger and as soon as they touch the trigger, it goes off. But the next modification is just this. It's a Volkortsen target hammer kit. And with just the hammer, replacing the hammer in the trigger housing, you will see anywhere from a three and a quarter to three and a half pound trigger pull. So once the shooter has gained the fundamentals and learned the rifle, can operate the rifle safely, and has shown that they have the fundamentals to advance, that is one thing that will help them as far as their accuracy is just that hammer. You don't have to play, replace any other springs, just the hammer kit. And something else with this stock, this right here, this one came with a synthetic stock. These synthetic stocks are a dime a dozen. Uh, you can find a handful of them on eBay anywhere from $5 a piece to $20 a piece. Um, they do sell this version with a wood stock and that may come in handy as far as if you have a shooter with a slightly shorter length of pull, you can cut the stock to fit that shooter for that time frame. Remember, it's always better to measure twice, cut once. Once you cut that wood stock, then if they grow a little bit, it's harder to add pieces back to that. But on those terms, then you have plenty of aftermarket stocks like the Magpul X22 that you can add to this receiver housing that will grow with the shooter. But for the meantime, especially these synthetic stocks, if you need to add a cheek rest so that the shooter gets a good cheek mount on that rifle, you don't feel bad about taking something similar to like this pipe covering or pool noodle to get them a good cheek weld on that rifle and it doesn't hurt your feelings as bad to glue it or stick it to this rifle uh, with a synthetic stock. And with the or drilling holes, they have cheek mounts, the, the Clydex cheek mounts that you can mount. You gotta drill a couple holes in it. Doesn't hurt your feelings as bad with this synthetic stock. I have two or three of them on hand after you do this a while, you'll end up with more parts than you know what to do with. Um, but that's for future reference. If you cut a wood stock, something like that Magpul stock is a good addition to this rifle, even right off the bat. Uh, if you want to spend a little extra for a stock that'll fit the shooter right off the bat. Uh, so with that, I hope that answers some questions on some uh, do-it-yourself modifications for the 1022. We'll go over a few other rifles on maybe some other videos and answer some more questions. Thank you very much.